so let's talk about those presentations. Um, Jerry, what does a breakthrough cancer patient look like? What, what do they come in and tell you? Is their pain, uh, uh, you know, exacerbation lasts for hours or days? Is this a, hey doc, I get a quick onset and a quick offset? What, what's their breakthrough pain like? Um, it, it varies from patient to patient. Sometimes they, uh, it begins and then can progressively gets worse until it's managed. Other times it spikes and goes back down before they can even reach for the medicine bottle. Um, and so that it varies from patient to patient and condition to condition. I want to talk more about that patient whose pain spikes by the time they could reach for the medication bottle. You know, clearly we have different categories of opioids, long-acting, short-acting, this new class of turf or rapid onset opioids. Um, how do we figure out, Mark, how do you figure out in practice? You have a cancer patient in the office, says, Doc, listen, you know, my transdermal fentanyl patch or my around-the-clock morphine seems to be helping, and even that immediate release product works, but, you know, it's not good enough. I'm having these episodes of pain. How do you decide which category of opioid to place them on? I have a certain, you know, algorithm that I use for each patient, so I would say I start with my short acting, if they're using a lot of short, I go to my long acting, and then I either will add on a third, which is this new class of drug, and I use that for the burst pain. And rapid onset of benefit improves quality of life, and that's kind of how I've incorporated it. I've also incorporated with using the rapid onset and removing the intermediate dose narcotics as well. So I use it in each individual case differently. Sometimes sure. as a third, sometimes in lieu of the second. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you know, along those same lines, you have to m match the needs of the patient. The patient's saying that hydrocodone preparation, oxycodone preparation, it, it, it works, but it works only for certain types of pain. Um, I need something, they'll tell you, I need something that works within minutes or within a much shorter time frame than this works. And they're telling you that they need a different product. So it sounds like the patients have basically identified a need for this category of analgesic for a more rapid onset. Listen to your patient, they'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So, so uh, uh, surprisingly, we're all in agreement on a, on a point. I'm looking forward to some, uh, to some controversy, Charles. Uh, Look at someone else. <laughs> <laughs> so so let's, let's talk about, uh, Vitaly, tell us a little bit about your experience in treating breakthrough pain in cancer patients. Easy to do, hard to do, what kind of products do you use? Well, pain is pain. So I, I think that uh, by being a chronic pain physician, um, you need to know how to address pain, uh, chronic pain in cancer patients. Uh, and as Mark mentioned, um, you know, using uh, both uh, intermediate, long-acting, or uh, even uh, you know, uh, rapid onset, uh, short-acting medications can be very helpful. We also need not to forget that some of the cancer patients develop cancer on the background of chronic, let's say, low back pain or failed back surgery syndrome. So this should not be overlooked. Um, and most likely, these patients will come uh, already on opioids. Uh, some, some of these patients will have aberrant uh, drug using behaviors before they uh, uh, contracted uh, cancer. So um, when I uh, evaluate the patient, I would like to uh, say that I, we do a comprehensive evaluation. We, we talk to the patient when uh, the pain is more, more severe, whether this precludes uh, them uh, being able to sleep or that wakes them in the middle of the night because we all know that the quality of sleep is, is crucial in, in the overall uh, pain control. I also would like to know um, whether they have coexisting disease, let's say if they're morbidly obese, um, you know, uh, if, if they're morbidly obese and have obstructive sleep apnea, are they utilizing CPAP? Because uh, obviously a combination of uh, sleep apnea and opioids can be very um, dangerous. Whether they are on other medications such as benzodiazepines, antidepressants, anticonvulsants, uh, that in conjunction with opioids can have cumulative effect on a respiratory depression, mental status, and so forth. So you really need to have a comprehens comprehensive view and assessment of the patient. It almost sounds like uh, similar tissues we've discussed uh, in the past, that you need specific sensitivity around this class of opioid. This is a potent class of medication, uh, and you have to understand the risk factors. Mark, let's change direction for just a second. Let's review the NCCN clinical practice guidelines for the management of adult cancer pain. 
uh, I think these guidelines list uh, how to manage cancer pain in opioid naive patients. They talk about how to manage cancer pain in opioid tolerant patients. Uh, they give us some suggestions for pain intensity rating scales uh, for overall management. And they go into the basic principles of prescribing, titrating, maintaining opioids, and, and safe use of opioids. But if I recall correctly, the NCCN guidelines also talk a little bit about breakthrough pain or rescue medications. Mm -hmm. So I think that the NCCN guidelines are very general um, for the management of pain in, you know, for cancer patients. Are all the uh, oncologists looking at the NCCN guidelines? That's another question. So I think everybody still individualizes their own management of pain, regardless of what the guidelines say, but of course being appropriate. And I think in terms of the rapid onset, um, this has now become fully instituted and part of the NCCN guidelines, but it's the question of how do we further educate physicians, specifically oncologists, because the pain management doctors are already educated on using this drug class. How do we educate oncologists to get out of their own same treatment regimens and move into the rapid onset class? And I think that to me is most, you know, the most important precedent of at least getting that into the NCC and showing oncologists that yes, this should be part of your armamentarium to use now going forward. So Jerry, also being in the... Of the